So this device is a spin indexer or spin indexer. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what it's for, how it's used and how to modify it to make it a bit more user friendly. I'll also go on later to make some parts with it so you can see it being used in practice. The spin indexer is essentially a work holding device for the milling machine. It has a 5C collet on the front here that you insert your work into. Obviously 5C collets come in a number of shapes and sizes so it's quite versatile. And what it allows you to do is to accurately index a part to machine multiple radial features on that part. So for instance, uh, the flats on a bolt head um, or the teeth on a gear wheel or to put like evenly spaced holes around a, a cylinder, for instance. Um, I've got some specific projects in mind for it. Um, no, uh, most notably, I've got a couple of projects coming up that require um, dials, uh, measuring dials. So I want to be able to accurately cut those measuring marks into those dials using this device. The dividing plate itself is marked out in 10 degree divisions uh, from naught all the way through to 35 or 350 degrees and back to zero again for 360. Um, in 10 degree divisions. So we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on and so forth. And then on the device itself, we've got um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, um, which represents the degree divisions between the units of 10. The way we select these divisions uh, in units of 10 is by using the pin in the zero hole there. So you see, you see we've got 10 degrees there and 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and so on and so forth. Now, if we wanted to select a division between um, 20 and 30, um, then we would move that pin uh, into one of the corresponding holes. So for instance, let's put it in the, uh, in the four there and move that index back and it clicks into the hole at 24 degrees there. And again, if we wanted to move on onto 27, we'd put it in the seven hole and move the, the indexing plate around to 20, 27 and lock it in just like so. So in summary, we can divide a circle very accurately into 360 divisions or any factor of 360. So that's, you know, um, a number divided into 360 with no remainder. So we could divide it into three, into six, into 12, into 18, uh, 30, and so on and so forth, which is incredibly useful. Um, but it also at the same time limits us because if you wanted to, I don't know, for instance, cut a 62 tooth gear wheel, you couldn't do that with this indexing head as it currently stands. In order to do that, you'd need to use a more complex dividing head or modify this in some way um, with a div dividing plate uh, with a different number of holes in it. Now, um, Tom Lipson's actually done this I'll, on his channel over at Ox Tools. I'll leave a link to dis uh, in the description to his video so you can check that out if you're interested. There are some limitations with this specific design of spin indexer, and that's how do you attach it to the mill table. Now you can see here that I'm using strap clamps on the base, but the question remains, how do you actually align the spindle with the uh, direction of the mill? Of course, you can do this by putting a dial test indicator into the spindle of the mill and indicating the work in the uh, 5C collet and tapping the, um, tapping the spin indexer uh, at the back of the base in order to align it. What would be a lot more convenient though is just being able to put the spin indexer directly into the vise without having to bolt it to the table at all. The problem I've got though is these painted edges on the side of the base. They're not square to the front faces or the back edge of the vise as you can see and painted surfaces aren't good for clamping on anyway. Now you can see here we've got a nice machine surface on the, on the bottom there and on the front face as well as on the back face. Now these are all square and parallel to each other so what I'd really like to be able to do is to machine the sides of the casting uh, flush and parallel with the front and the back. First things first, we need to strip the spin index down to the raw casting. Next, we need to mount it in the vise. Now this is gonna be a particularly precarious setup, so I'm gonna be clamping it as hard as I can, um, but it is gonna be a bit of a sketchy setup, so I'm only gonna be taking light cuts. I need to make sure that I get this as level as possible, so I've set up a uh, dial test indicator in the um, spindle of the mill, and I'm just tapping it in there. I did eventually get this to about one one hundredth of a millimeter across the 10 centimeter base, so that's close enough. The dimensions on this base aren't super critical, but I would like to try and keep the amount I take off each side reasonably consistent so that the workpiece remains approximately in the middle of the, uh, of the device. So I'm just swapping out the um, collet chuck there for the edge finder. So the edge finder, as the name suggests, finds the edge of a workpiece. 
you can see it spinning like that and then when it straightens up you're near the edge and when it kicks out you're, you're bang on and what you can do then is to reset the zero on the DRO and move the edge finder across the workpiece. Now found the other edge of the workpiece, we can go to the DRO and use the half function. This means that when we go back to zero on the X axis there, we should be bang in the middle of the part. Off camera, I've also edge found and centered the uh, Y axis. So next up is installing the 12 mil solid carbide end mill so I can mill down the sides of the base. Although I'll be using the spin index in the vice most of the time, there will be occasions when I need to bolt it to the mill table, such as when I need to use the tailstock attachment that I have for it. That's used when you have a, a longer piece that needs support and um, it wouldn't be any good having it hanging out of the vice. So for that reason, I'm going to be putting some holes in the bottom of the, uh, the base here to make it easier to bolt to the mill table and easier to align. I'm starting off with a solid carbide spotting drill here to give the next drill a fair chance at uh, staying on course. Following up now with a 6mm pilot drill. Now cast iron is a, a nice material to machine, it is messy, dirty, but it's um, it does cut nicely. Um, but I, I'm taking it quite easy here. Um, small pecking motions because of the fragility of the setup. I'm following up here with a 10 mil drill, which gets me to final size for my clamping hardware, which is 10 millimeter. I'm finishing off with a chamfer tool just to break those edges. So it seems to come out um, quite well. I'm quite pleased with those holes on the bottom there. Um, they seem to have come out quite nicely. Um, the edges seem um, to have a really reasonable finish and are straight and parallel with the rest of the um, with the rest of the casting, which is good. One thing, however, is that the uh, the top there with the top of those holes, uh, it's not going to make a good clamping surface um, for for bolts. So I'm going to have to do something about that. The first thing I'm trying here is, is fly cutting um, the uh, top surface of the casting there um, to give a clamping surface for these bolts. Um, unfortunately though, uh, that didn't really work out. The um, cast iron quite often has um, quite a hard skin on it from the um, leftover from the casting process and it ended up burning my tool up. So um, I had to move on to, uh, to, to milling it instead. So I'm quite pleased with the way that the casting came out. It should be a lot easier to use now and um, a lot quicker uh, being able to just put it in the vise. So um, that's a good thing. I just break those edges uh, with a file um, so it's a bit nicer to handle. So uh, next up I'm going to be reassembling and showing you how I go about using it. So as a demo I'm just going to show making a very simple uh, bolt head. Um, six faces. Um, quite easy to work out on the on the on the spin indexer um, 6 into 360 is 60 degrees so we need to index it around by 60 degrees uh, each each time simple enough what I'm doing here is just milling down about half a mil at a time until I'm happy with the size of the flat for the first face of the bolt head and now I'll just index around to 60 degrees It's 
to keep the faces nice and consistent, I'm not going to go up and down on this cut. I'm just going to cut straight through at full depth. It's only brass, so it's pretty soft, um, so that it shouldn't be too much of a problem for the mill. So from here, it's just simply a case of continuing to index round and uh, until the remainder of the cuts are complete. And finally, I'm just going to clean it up on the lathe, get rid of those rough edges and put a nice little chamfer on the end. So that's us finished with this bolt head. Um, next up, I'm gonna show you one more use case for the Spindexer. So a while back, I built this um, tailstock die holder from a kit from Hemingway Kits. Quite an interesting project. It's got, um, it can accommodate two sizes of dies, one on each end, and they're retained by these three grub screws. It's actually quite an interesting design. It's got a free spinning component in the middle, so you can present the um, the die up to the work. And then once you want to cut the thread, you engage that lever and it locks everything tight and, and that pulls the die onto the, uh, onto the work and cuts the thread. So obviously currently this only accommodates two sizes of dies. So what I did is I actually made this, um, this second component here that will um, accommodate two further smaller dies and it also fits into the uh, recesses in the existing um, body of the uh, die holder there, as you can see. But what we need to do is we need to be able to cut um, cut the grub screws to, to, to hold it. Um, now, this was initially quite tricky on the original uh, job because I didn't have an indexing device. And um, yeah, I had to lay it all out by hand. So this is gonna be a good use case for the Spindexer. In order to hold the workpiece, I'm gonna need to machine up an arbor, which is what I'm doing here, just uh, machine, um, machine out of mild steel down to about 20 millimeters in diameter and a bit uh, bigger than that to, to hold the actual workpiece on the end but the 20 mil will be uh, a good fit for the 20 millimeter collet that I'm, I'm going to use. Just putting a chamfer on the end there to, to clean it up. And drilling and tapping for M6 and finally parting off. I'm edge finding both sides of the workpiece here and using the half function on the DRO to get the center point of the part. And finally, I'm using the spotting drill followed by a, um, the tapping drill for a, an M3 here um, and uh, a little chamfer tool to finish off the holes. I tapped it off camera because it was just too small to get the, uh, the, get the tap in there, but um, that seemed to work out okay. So I did the same to the other side, um, but tapped it uh, M5 instead of M3. Um, so that's that part complete. So that concludes this episode on the spin indexer and its uses. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching. Um, if you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments. Um, I am going to be using this spin indexer for some upcoming projects. So if um, you're interested in, what, in seeing those, then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon and you'll be notified. Um, this um, tailstock die holder, if you are interested in seeing me make that, let me know in the comments and um, I might make a remake that on, on film. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks for watching.